DC here. How you doing guys? Well, it's confession time. That's right. I've been lying to you. No, not lying. Maybe by omission. Well, hello, Spats. Spats came to comfort me. He says, you're going to tell him the truth, Mom. You're going to tell him the truth. He's actually had his cat food today. He's just telling me thank you. That's what cats do. You're welcome. I have mentioned a couple of times I'm not doing good on my keto diet, and I think it's obvious by looking at my face and arms and shoulders and, the, you know, that I'm gaining weight. I am a human being. <laughs> Too much so, unfortunately. Uh, stress at work. Oh, we have been having a lot of it, guys. I can't even talk about it. I wish I could. And, um... Been losing some good people for petty little things, and it's scary because you think, oh God, I've got to be perfect, I've got to be perfect, you know, and it, none of us are perfect, and I am probably the least perfect person of all. So that's been stressful. My son moving in has been stressful. You know, he cleaned out my house and threw everything away. As a matter of fact, I discovered today that he threw away all my summer clothes. Yeah, I've got very few tank tops or anything, so you'll probably see me in the same outfit for a while until I can afford to buy some new tank tops and summer light braziers and things like that. So, <laughs> and I've been having headaches, like horrible, and I don't have headaches, and this is all, all from stress, and so I've been off of my keto diet because what does grandma turn to when she's stressed? Carbohydrates. Sugar. Um... Worst of all is just doing the uh, SAD, Standard American Diet, and that is eating fake food, which we have so much of in our grocery stores. And if you're in other countries, you know, you're like, I think maybe your food is fresher and not as processed with chemicals as ours is. But, you know, until you really study and start thinking about it, you don't realize how we're eating fake chemicals, fake food, a lot. And it's what we grow up on, you know, uh, TV dinners we started out with in the 50s, 60s, and, um, you know, things like that. And I think we just became used to it, and then we wonder why cancer is so prevalent, you know. Uh, my great-grandmother died of lung cancer, never smoked a cigarette a day in her life. My grandmother died of lung cancer, essentially, and old age. Uh, they both died late in life, but they did die of lung cancer, and they, the one of them smoked. Mother has problems with her lungs now at 83. You hear her coughing in my videos. Yes, Mother, I'm talking about you. And she won't use an inhaler. I have lung trouble, but I smoked. My theory was, stress them out, maybe they'll get stronger. It's like that new theory with the peanuts. Feed your peanut allergy kids a little bit of peanuts all along, and they'll build up an immunity. So, but I did quit. I quit, what now, guys? Has it been three years? Oh, about three years ago I quit smoking. So, yeah, comment below. I know, it wasn't hard for me to quit. I just put them down and quit buying them. So why can I quit smoking, but I can't stop eating carbohydrates? You see? That will show you how addictive sugar is. And bread. And pasta. And Little Debbie. Little Debbie cookies. She makes all kinds of good fake foods. Cookies, donuts, things like that. And they are delicious to Americans. <laughs> they probably taste like horrible to anyone else, but... We've grown up on these things, and why are you being so loving today? He's not usually this patient or loving with me. You supporting me? Every once in a while, your cat just knows. <laughs> a good boy. So, anyway, I am uh, off my diet completely, and I have to say I feel awful, not emotionally, physically. Um, <clears throat> guilty and feeling bad about it, yes. But physically, my head feels like it's stuffed full of cotton. Um, having trouble thinking. Just feel like I'm just thinking about everything all at once, trying to be perfect, 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 like at work. And oh, you know, and, but having no motivation at all. I mean, I just want to sleep all the time. We went from four weeks ago, I think we had snow here in Missouri, and today it's like 90. And yesterday was 90, the day before, the day before. I mean, we went from, from winter to summer, full-blown summer. Usually it's hot like this in August. I do not know. Oh, you're done now. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. Something's going on. We all know. But, you know, it's like, what? You know, the weather is definitely changing. 
Nothing we can do about this, guys. We are not gods. I wish I were. <laughs> Boy, would I change things. I would instantly be thin, healthy, and gorgeous. But that's not going to happen. So, Debbie's doing great on the keto diet. I, she's lost well over 50 pounds. And she is just got energy galore. She's doing awesome. Junebug comments on my Facebook page. She is going gangbusters on the keto diet. She's doing awesome. I know I have got to look at these women and gain motivation to do this. It's just that I, the one thing I have in my life, well, two things, coffee and carbohydrates. They're, they're the two drugs I turn to, and I think a lot of us do. Um, we just don't think of them as drugs because they're legal. And unfortunately, even though they make us feel calmer because of the brain chemicals going on, it's not good for us. It's, it's so bad in other ways, you know. Aches, pains, everything else. I started taking this new uh, thing called Hyperzine. They recommended it in a Women's Day magazine. Said it would help, you know, you make connections in your brain and make you feel less brain fog. But honestly, it hasn't done anything in the last four days that I've taken it that I can tell. Uh, and I think it's all dietary. Really. I, I need to get off of the sugar, but the withdrawals, we know, are horrendous. And then my son came up the other day, and he was like, he weighs about 300 pounds. And he's not quite six feet, and he says, I need to drop some LBs. I said, we need to drop the carbs. We get rid of the bread, the sugars, the, you know, things, pastas and things. And he's like, yeah, and then I'd have a heart attack. So, Mr. Negative... He doesn't listen to me because, you know, I'm just an old woman and I don't know anything. Which is really, for the most part, true. <laughs> Can't argue with it. But, you know, I've studied the dieting my whole life. You know, 50 years of thinking, wondering, studying. And uh, I still don't know anything, except I do know this. And that is that eating higher fat quells your cravings. Good fat. Well, let's just, yeah. Yeah. I assume you knew that. Eating higher good fats quells cravings. Cutting out that sugar and carbs, it, it's amazing how it makes you feel and the energy it gives you. I didn't exactly lose a lot of weight doing it. A very, very slow weight loss for me. But I am sort of messed up anyway because I had tried the gastric bypass and all of that and I think that that does affect me. I know that uh, eating carbohydrates has really affected me. Um, I'm going to put another seat on the toilet in there <laughs> and broke that new seat. I got a new one. I just haven't put it on because the toilet is now caving into the floor. Got it flushing and now it's caving in. And it's like, we got to wait till we get someone to rebuild the floor and put it back upright and then we were going to put the new seat on. Oh well, that is beside the point. Got the house halfway painted and then my son took off to go move more of his stuff. Told me he wouldn't be back till Sunday. Two nights ago, I'm laying in bed. I was off that night, and I'm not really quite sleeping at night, you know, because I work overnight. So I'm trying to sleep, and I'm dozing in and out, in and out, and all of a sudden I hear a man cough in my house. I came off that bed about four feet in the air and started screaming his name, hoping to heavens he answered back, and he did. He says, it's me, Mom. I didn't want to scare you. Holy, <laughs> I was up for the next three hours helping him carry stuff in. I think it was about three in the morning. He's a night owl also. So uh, it's morning. It's Sunday morning. I woke up this morning. I have to go to work tonight. But I was outside feeding the goats. Here we go. One of Grandma's story-isms here, right? And I have just about given up that Mama Goat's going to have babies. She's huge, she's fat, but then again, I kind of feed my animals good, as you know. And I think it's been long enough since Elvis died that she's not pregnant. I just, I just think the gestation period doesn't seem... I mean, unless she got pregnant on the day he died, but I don't think so. And it's still been long enough, hasn't it, guys? Someone find that old video and count back, but I think it's... You know, their gestation's like, what, about four months? And it's been four months, maybe? Anyway, the two babies that she had last fall, they've kind of quit nursing. They still nurse occasionally, but I noticed her udder was full. And she's walking kind of bow-legged, and I thought, oh, she's miserable because they quit nursing. 
I reached down and grabbed one, and oh yeah, we got goat milk. She's never really been milked before. What do you say, guys? Want to go give it a try? This should be fun and harrowing, <laughs> but it will give her some relief, and it gives me fresh goat milk, which I love. I know, it's not exactly keto. We can make goat cheese. That would be keto. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, yeah, let's give it a try. I don't know if I can get the camera set up to film exactly, and I'm not sure how I'm going to find a place to kind of corral her in because I don't have a milk stand. This is going to be one of those, uh, you know, grandma tech things where I'll figure out how to do it and I'll let you watch. Here we go. Now the goats know I'm up to something. They've been watching me set this up. Mama goat's down here to my left. She's interested in the food, but she knows something's up. As far as I know, they said they tried to milk her, the people I bought her from. But as far as I know, it wasn't successful. And so we can just consider her to be a wild goat milked for the first time without a proper stand or anything. She's down here eating below me. She knows something's up. So I'm going to put some food in this bucket, and the babies are going to come up too. They're going to want in it also. I got a small jar so I can hold it in one hand, and I'm hoping I can get her trapped in good enough. We may have to put her between our knees. I've done that before. But uh, she's kind of... Kind of. I don't know. Like I said, I don't think she's pregnant. Maybe she still is. Who knows? But she's fat and she's full of milk and she needs some relief. So, come on, darling. Let's come up here and get you some... Yeah. Let's come up here and get you some... Something to eat and get you some relief. <laughs> come on. Come on. I'm trying to lead you to some food over here. Looky. Looky, looky. Looky, food. I'll probably knock that off and break it. Oh, come on, looky girl. There you go. That's what I wanted you to do. With goats, food is always a motivator. It sure is. So, she's eating away happily. So are the youngins. I've got her up against this heavy thing and we're going to try. <laughs> Come on, here you go. Okay, honey, I'm gonna give you some relief. <laughs> she says, I don't want relief. <laughs> Come on. I can milk you from behind just as well as I can milk you from the front. Come on. Come on, come on back. You might as well eat while you're doing this. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it always goes. If you don't have something to pin them in tight with, and be able to see. <laughs> but uh, this is my second way to milk a wild goat. <laughs> Are a good one. You're a toughie. Yeah, you are. You're a toughie. All right. Pull back. That's okay. <laughs> she don't like it. Like it, I know. You'll like it when you get relief. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's probably enough for a first try. <laughs> we didn't get too much. <laughs> oh, you're gonna hang yourself. <laughs> That might have not looked too successful, <laughs> but I consider it pretty good for the first time with a little wild goat. And she got a little relief. Most of it went on the ground. 
And as you can see, it's being enjoyed by Betsy. <laughs> oh, Star there, he's going to clean up the food. Scud's going to go check on her. Are you okay? And we got a little bit of goat milk. <laughs> Which I'm going to go taste and enjoy. I have never tasted dwarf goat milk before. Let's see what it is. So I stuck this little bit of milk I got in the freezer for a quick chill down, then went looking for my strainers, of which you know I have many. However, since my son cleaned up my kitchen, he must have thrown them away. I can't find a strainer anywhere. You're going to hear this for a long time. So I did buy a clean cotton uh, towel cloth, which I wash. And I am going to strain that through that towel because, you know, you get goat hairs and she's kicking around quite a bit and dirt and everything. And I'm going to strain it right through that clean cotton towel. Oh, yeah. And uh, this gives us just a tiny bit of goat milk. <laughs> Was it worth it? Well, we'll find out. I had it in the freezer chilling down fast, and I'm going to go back and put it in the freezer and chill it down quick again. Goat milk is always best cold to me. Okay, moment of truth, guys. I got most of the sweat wiped off of me. <laughs> it's hot. And uh, I put it in the freezer to chill. Here's our little bit of hard-earned goat milk. I can see why people back in the day stayed thin. If you had to work that hard just to get a little sip, this is dwarf Nubian goat milk. And I've never tasted it before, so let's see what it tastes like. Oh, wow. That's creamy and rich and sweet. That was worth it. It's almost like ice cream. But people who have tasted goat milk before, that is, um, it needs to be chilled a little more. I was impatient. And they say it has that goaty taste. It's gross. Um, you've had old goat milk, or at, le at least a day or two old. It's best super fresh. Right after you milk them, you chill it fast, and you know, strain it, chill it, and it is the lightest, creamiest milk, and it's digestible by human beings, which technically, <laughs> what is in my mouth? Goat hair? <laughs> no, it was my hair. Um, <laughs> which technically, I, oh, the sweat, it's 95 in here today. I don't... I don't cool my kitchen. So, where was I? Ah, it, it developed something called caproic acid, and that's why goat milk is not marketable like goat like cow's milk is, because cow's milk will stay sweet and good for a long time, whereas goat milk goes off in a day, maybe two. I mean, I've kept it chilled, really cold for a day, and it's been okay, but two days, and you start tasting that kind of goaty flavor. So, yeah, if you want goat milk, which is highly digestible, much better for you than cow's milk and has been drank since biblical times, then you have to get your own goat and milk it yourself. And believe you me, once they're trained and they get used to the idea you're actually giving them some relief and helping them, they hop up on those stands and they're like ready to go happy, happy. She had just never been milked before, so she was like, oh no, what is going on? <laughs> and they always fight like that about the first three or four times. I had a wild one one time. It was a boar goat. Most people don't milk boar goats. And it took me about three weeks to get her used to getting on a stand and getting milked and to realize that I was giving her some relief. She had actually lost her baby. It died. So she needed to be milked. <laughs> and, uh, but she gave some pretty good milk, believe it or not, after she got used to it. I don't have a stand right now. My stand fell apart, and I don't have anyone to build me one, so guess who's going to have to build one? And uh, it's just too hot out there to even try, and i got so many other things to do and so many other things to worry about. And I don't know if I'll get time to build a goat stand. So <laughs> anyway, I love you all. Let's take a quick look. I have a little bit of weird bad news. Not super bad, but not good. Um, I put 11 babies out in their own house. There's now eight, and there's no signs of the ones that are missing. Something's going under the chicken coop and snatching them and taking them off and eating them. My bet is it's either a fox, a coon, or a possum. But it's not even leaving a feather. But they're little. They're like little bite size. So uh, today I'm going to be moving them somewhere safer. 
up closer to the house. And another trickle of sweat. Ugh! I'm spritzing. I hate sweating. I really do. This is terrible. Alright, but the blues, the sapphire gems are all safe. Everyone else is safe. We could go take a quick look if you like. Hi, babies. What's left of you? There's my pretty Lydia, too. She's still in there. They like to come running still when Mommy opens the door. Unfortunately, this one here likes to hop on top with her brother and butt me in the head. You need a new home, Star. You really, really do. Scud's going to chase them around so you can see them. Thanks, Scud. Not appreciated. Well, hi, Friendly. How are you, son? You always come up to greet me. Hi, guys. How's it going? You staying cool in the shade? Yeah? How would you feel about having some little friends in here with you? I don't really want to do it. I think we're at capacity right now. There's my pretty lavender girl. Yes, there he is. And, uh, <laughs> so, they're all doing great. This is a wonderful pen, even though... The goats have pushed in the side about five inches. Hmm. Oh, bad goats. Hey, Romeo. How's it going? Hi, girls. I picked up eggs yesterday, and I already see three eggs. You guys are laying like mad. You know why? Tell them why, Romy. You gonna play with that? Yeah, I get it. There you go. Go get it. Get it, boy. <laughs> get that string there you go you notice he doesn't hit me though he just hits the string <laughs> he was a good boy <laughs> yes he is well the reason is I have been letting them out to eat during the day so they're getting a lot of calcium and protein and nutrition from eating the grass and stuff makes them lay more I know there's three in there there it is Thanks, ladies. I appreciate the eggs. You're good girls. Thank you, Romy. Love you, big guy. Mm, Dolores. Sammy, you're all happy now. You did your sitting this spring. Now you're out eating. Well, enough fun for today. I pulled up a bunch of weeds in the yard and all the chickens got salad. They were happy. <laughs> and I got my eggs for the day. Paul from... Uh, yesterday and today oh my goodness I wish you all were here to help me eat them <laughs> and I'm gonna quick before I sign off show you some wildflowers and some of the flowers that are blooming here it's gonna be a short spring these are spring flowers but this heat is going to just burn them up so we gotta take a quick look you know I said I wasn't planting anything this year but I gave in and put some sage in a pot <laughs> And look at the iris. Oh my goodness. I wish you could smell them. Oh, why can't they make a perfume that smells like iris? I would love that. I'd wear it all the time. <laughs> they maybe do. I don't know. And look at the wild. This is wild columbine. It grows up in the cracks in on my under my uh, deck you know carport I mean and it, every year it comes up in the crack under my carport next to the cement they're just beautiful what if I can get a picture of one of them from from underneath <laughs> to pick it up isn't that the prettiest thing and they dangle Oh, yes. My grandmother's iris will bloom this year. Uh, they're a beautiful pink color. I never get very many of them, though. But I got these odd-looking iris all over my property. Down the drive, I've got some yellows and some very light lavender blue, which is beautiful. But uh, they all just come up on their own every year. Believe me, if I planted them, they would grow beautiful. Wish you could smell them. And even my bleeding heart survived all the raking I did. And they put on those beautiful bleeding heart flowers. 
And that bush got huge. Maybe it needed to be raked out. I don't know. Just love the way they look. Look at that little line of hearts. How pretty is that? <laughs> That's about it. I could do some painting today, but since I have to go back to work later tonight, I've also got to get some sleep. So I will try to get back to you ASAP and let you know what's going on. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe to keep up with the insanity. And Grandma loves you all. If you want to help out, you know I have a little donation down on my front page. And I appreciate it, but you don't have to. <laughs> I do enjoy making videos for you all. And have a beautiful day. I hope it's warm and beautiful wherever you are. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. None the worse for wear. She's hiding from me behind the chicken coop. <laughs> or at least she thinks she is. <laughs>